if you decrease this force to 5 Newton, friction actually cannot increase itself beyond this number, maximum value. Hello students, in this video, we will have a look at a fairly easy question, but very conceptual one. The problem is based on the concept of friction, static friction. Here is your problem. In this diagram, the spring is presently compressed by 10 centimeter. The spring is compressed by 10 centimeter. A horizontal force F is being applied onto this block so as to keep it at rest. Mass of the block is 1 kilogram, right? It, it was observed that when the value of force is anywhere from 8 Newton to 18 Newton, when the value of force is anywhere from 8 Newton to 18 Newton, that means the force could be 8.1 Newton, force could be 17.2 Newton, it could be 10 Newton also. So, for all values of force ranging from 8 Newton to 18 Newton, the block stays at rest. Mind you, the spring is compressed by 10 centimeter. Now, if this is the given situation, what will be coefficient of friction between the block and the floor surface and what is the force constant of the spring? We have to find uh, value of these two constants k and mu. Now, all of you can pause the video and give this question a try. This is a quite an easy one and if you are well aware of the self adjusting nature of static friction, you will be able to do it. So, give it a try. Okay. Uh, here I am going to solve this question for all of you. Uh, this statement simply means that minimum force F required to keep the block stationary is 8 Newton and the maximum force that can be applied to keep the block at rest is 18 Newton, which means if the force is less than 8 Newton, the block is going to move and if the force is greater than 18 Newton, then also the block is going to move. So, in what situation the required force will be 8 Newton, that is uh, it will be minimum re uh, force required to keep the block at rest. Can you guess that? Uh, the force will be minimum, this external force required will be least to keep the block at rest under one circumstance and that is, I am not showing this spring here, okay, it is not required. Uh, that will happen when the static friction is providing maximum support to me against the spring force. Actually, the spring force is certainly in this direction. It is trying to push the block, right? If, if there were no friction, then applied force should have been equal to spring force to keep the block at rest. But because there is friction, I will take some help from friction and will apply a smaller force to maintain the block at rest. Yes, I will allow the friction, I will allow the friction to assume its limiting value in this direction. I am writing limiting friction as maximum F max, that is maximum value of static friction. So, I will, uh, I will apply my force so as to allow the friction to reach its limiting value supporting me, right? So, when the friction is at its limiting value, at its peak value, the force that I will require to apply will be least because I am getting maximum support from the friction. What is my target? My target is to balance the push of the spring. So, for example, let us say if the spring force is 100 Newton and this friction is, this friction can reach up to 30 Newton and this is 30, this is 100, I must apply at least 70 Newton force. If I apply less than that, if I apply a force that is less than 70 Newton, 
then friction cannot grow beyond this 30 Newton and there will be an unbalanced force in this direction because this is 100. So, this block will start moving in this direction. So, I will apply my force so as to allow the friction to reach its maximum value and in this case, if I am able to maintain this block at rest, then this is the minimum force required which is 8 Newton. So, this is 8 Newton as per the question. So, the first equation that I am going to write is this 8 Newton plus maximum value of static friction that is the limiting friction together they are equal to the spring force which is k into x. This is my first equation. Now, if I reduce uh, this force below 8 Newton, what is going to happen? Certainly, the friction plus this force will be unable to balance the push of the spring and therefore, the block is going to slide this way. Now, what happens if I increase my force to 10 Newton, let us say? If I make this force 10 Newton, what is going to happen? Will the block start moving in this direction? Absolutely no. If you increase the applied force a little bit, the friction is going to decrease by the same amount. If you make this force 10 Newton, then friction will decrease itself by 2 Newton and this plus this will still remain equal to this. See, the ultimate goal of the friction is to prevent any relative motion. Friction will adjust its magnitude and if required its direction also to prevent any slipping of the block on this horizontal surface. So, if you reduce this force, let us say you make it 5 Newton, then friction will decrease by 3 Newton, will it? No, I said something wrong. If you, if you decrease this force to 5 Newton, friction actually cannot increase itself beyond this number, maximum value and therefore, this plus this will be less than this and the block will move in this direction. But if you increase this force to let us say 12 Newton, friction will decrease itself by 4 Newton. So, this plus this will still remain to kx, that means equilibrium will be maintained. So, let us assume that we go on increasing this force. So, friction is decreasing itself. At one point in time, if you go on increasing this force and let us assume that your force becomes equal to spring force, then what will be the value of friction? It will be? 0 because my force is equal to spring force, friction need not come into play uh, to keep the block at rest. It is already at rest. It has no tendency to move and when it has no tendency to move, there will be absolutely no static friction on it. So, friction will adjust itself to 0. But what if I keep increasing this force even higher? If I make this force even higher, what will happen? Now, this force is greater than a spring force. Assume that my force is greater than a spring force, then what will happen? This block will have a tendency to move in this direction. For the time being, let us assume that the surface is smooth. Let us assume this force is 20 Newton. So, if I apply 24 Newton, then what is going to happen? This block will accelerate in this direction. But in presence of friction, that is not going to happen because friction wants to prevent relative motion at all cost. So, if my force becomes larger than this force, then what the friction is going to do is, friction will change its direction. So, this is the spring force acting in this direction. My force has become larger than the spring force. Friction is going to change its direction. Now, spring force, let us say 20 Newton, friction 4 Newton. Together they make 24 Newton. Applied force by me is also 24. So, it is a perfect balance. Now, what if I make this as 30 Newton and the friction will grow further. So, that this plus this becomes 30, right. So, if you go on increasing this force, this is static friction will go on increasing. At one point in time, this will reach its maximum value. According to the question, at this point, this force is actually 18 Newton. Because question says, if I increase my force beyond 18 Newton, 18 Newton, the block begins to move. 
So when I am applying 18 Newton force, the friction is actually at its peak value. So if I increase it further, if I increase the force further, friction cannot grow beyond this. So my force will be bigger than the resultant of these two forces and the block will start moving in this direction. So if I apply a force of less than 8 Newton, block will move this way. If I apply a force of greater than 18 Newton, friction and spring force together will not be able to prevent this block from moving in this particular direction. So when the force applied is 18 Newton, obviously this is the scenario, friction is the uh, friction is at its peak value, limiting value and naturally spring force plus friction which is Kx plus F max is equal to 18 Newton. Now this is your second equation. So just by solving equation 1 and 2, we can find the value of Kx as well as F max. It can be done very easily. The first equation I am writing it below this one. First equation can be written as the first equation can be written as this. Now if you add these two equations, it becomes 2kx is equal to 26. So kx is equal to 13 Newton. So x, the compression in the spring is 10 centimeter, 0.1 meter. So if you put 0.1 meter in place of x, the value of k will be 130 Newton per meter. So this is the force constant of the spring. Now you know the value of kx, kx is 13 Newton, substitute it here or in the other equation. If you put kx is equal to 13 Newton here, what do you get? You get f max is equal to 13 minus 8 that is 5 Newton. What is f max? It is mu into normal force here which is I guess all of you understand that it is equal to F mg normal reaction force. So mu mg is the limiting value of friction force which is 5. Now this mass is 1 kg, g is 10 let us say. So mu will be 5 upon 10 that is 0 0.5. So this solves the problem. So it was a fairly easy question and I guess uh, I have already done one more question on the same concept somewhere on this channel itself. You can find that question for yourself and give it a try <laughs> just for another practice. So students see you in the next video. By the way, don't forget to like the video and do subscribe to this channel. Goodbye.